everyone is here. Uh, we're just going to get started. Today, uh, let me introduce <clears throat> Dr. Yanis Yorsos, who is the Dean of the Viterbi School of Engineering at the U University of Southern California. Today, we also have Kelly Gulis, uh, who is Associate Senior Associate Dean for the school, who is also the Head of Admission and Student Engagement. We also have Kami Lee, who is the Head of Graduate Admission at the school. Um, my name is Ray, I'm based in Shanghai. Uh, I'm the director of Viterbi East Asia office. Today, we also have Zhu Hui An, who is our associate director of the Shanghai office. Okay, um, let's get started. So, uh, Dean Yorsos, would you care to share a few words with the students? Absolutely, my pleasure. I don't see them, but I'm sure they are there. <laughs> So uh, welcome, good morning to everyone of you. Um, I, uh, it's uh, wonderful to have you here today in this uh, webinar. And I am here to welcome you uh, formally to UAC. Um, I know that um, uh, it has been a uh, journey for you on, on how to get here uh, in terms of uh, your academic preparation and obviously, you are outstanding students, and we are so happy that you applied to the university and that you are admitted to the university. And we look forward to have many of you, uh, if not all of you, uh, on campus uh, when uh, fall semester starts in, uh, in a, little, a few months from now. Uh, I can, uh, I know that uh, I used to come to China about uh, almost twice a year pre COVID. And now that uh, COVID is almost over, I think that we'll uh, hopefully be able to uh, resume a visit in China and uh, being able to come and, and see all, lots of old friends there, as well as uh, make some new ones. And so I wanted to let you know that uh, uh, Mr. Ray Shu, who is here with us um, in, this, in this event, has been part of USC Viterbi for quite a long time in China. I don't know how long, Ray, but certainly uh, we're so- 12 years now. 12 years, that, that's actually uh, a significant a testament to um, the, the growth and the support that the school has in China. Um, go, ahead. go ahead, Ray. Yeah, this will be sort of an interview, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Anis. So uh, now uh, Kemi has a few questions from the students based on a registration survey we sent out. Um, Kemi. Hi, Dean Yortsos. Thanks for being here today to welcome these uh, wonderful newly admitted students from East Asia. Um, we did give them the opportunity to ask a few questions beforehand. So if you wouldn't mind just taking a few moments to address a few of these. Um, sure. we'll appreciate that. Okay, so um, one of the first questions is, um, with the shakeups happening in the tech sector, um, how will the Viterbi School support its students? And how do you envision the Viterbi School's role given the current economic climate? Oh, absolutely. Um, let me uh, say that uh, we live in unprecedented times, uh, particularly in technology, because things are moving so fast and are so, um, enabling and empowering across very much every discipline. I think that we have been saying that engineering and technology is the enabling discipline of our times, the empowered discipline of our times. I think we will be saying this even more stronger as the, as the, in the next uh, few years. Um, I remember when COVID came and I told people that, you know, after COVID uh, and, uh, and te technology and engineering will be uh, increasingly important. And what we see today is even, even more than that. Now, the shakeup that you see in the industry, I think is a result of the fact that there's been some sort of a, um, a, a large growth during the COVID times when you know a lot of the th things became virtual. And I think that's, you see, so you will see it, a transition, which I think is going to resume up maybe in a few months, maybe in a year. Uh, when things are going to sort of stabilize and then move on in a, to essentially ad address many many different new things that are coming along along the uh, in 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 uh, in, in our uh, future, uh, the, you know pe people talking about a technology uh, a, a growing exponentially fast. I think that's even more than that. I think we are approaching 
accelerated rates that we have not exhibit, uh, um, experienced before. And I think having a strong engineering background across all engineering disciplines, by the way, will become in, very important, particularly at the master's level, uh, very important for, for the future of uh, um, economic future of pretty much every country. As you, many of you are aware, of, car, of course, of the role that AI is playing, uh, particularly generative AI, which is uh, a, uh, a, something that is, uh, has been created very recently and has taken the world by, in a, by a storm, uh, whether this is the chat GPT or other things as well. And I think that these are these this, uh, developments ahead of us are going to be extraordinary. And being able to uh, understand this, um, not only uh, shape it and be able to across all disciplines, whether it is computer science or whether it's uh, chemical engineering or whether it is materials engineering or anything like that. And you know, this will be a, a, a very, very important thing to, to, to possess. And so I think that um, in uh, answering your specific question, uh, Kami, I think there is going to be, uh, there, there have been some changes, but I think these changes, uh, first of all, ap apply to sort of a big tech, if you, uh, if you want. Uh, I think that uh, many other companies are coming up, uh, small, smaller companies, that you know, innovation and entrepreneurship will continue being very strong in this area. Um, it was earlier today, I was talking to someone who works in the, in the sphere of blockchain, and he was telling me of all the tremendous developments and, and opportunities that will be in this area as well. So if we were to look at the, how we solve uh, important grand challenges in the world, whether it is in sustainability, in security, health, or enriching life, there is no uh, better time to do this through the technology, technological developments that, that happen now. I can see tremendous convergence of the health area with uh, engineering in many different ways. Uh, I think the, the future is extraordinary. And uh, I think that um, an, an engineering degree or particularly an advanced engineering degree will be just fundamental to be able to address all these important questions and challenges that we're going to have. Great, thank you. And then you actually touched upon my next question, um, which was the students' questions, but they um, uh, did pose the question about, um, you know, you speak a lot about engineering plus and what other disciplines do you see as the areas that engineering will be affecting um, most in the next few years? And I know you mentioned health here, but did you want to add anything to that part? Yeah. So technology, so, so when I look and when people ask me, um, you know, I, I, I have a lot of interviews with uh, prospective uh, faculty members, uh, these days, and I, they asked me, what do you see, where do you see the trajectory of the School of Engineering? So my answer is very simple. Um, everything that we do in engineering, in sciences, in the world at large, falls into four buckets, four areas. One is, um, and they are not in certain order, right? One is sustainability. Sustainability mean I, and I look at it from the perspective of energy, materials, food, water, air, climate, right? So that's, that's all this big bucket. Um, uh, the second big bucket is health. So this is the, the inter interface between engineering and medicine, for example, which I think is going to be to revolutionize medicine in many different ways. Third is security. Security could be, let's say, blockchain. Uh, uh, cybersecurity, could be uh, electronics, could be space, could be infrastructure. These are things that are very important for everyone. And the fourth is what I call enriching life, where uh, mostly through digital means, this is where computer science, for example, and information technology is very important and enables pretty, enables pretty much everything. And this also enables education, enables uh, entertainment, it enables uh, you know, the scientific discovery and, and new technologies and new innovations and so on and so forth. So what we do at USC is all these four buckets in many different ways, whether it's sustainability, whether it is materials, whether it is health, biomedical engineering, or, or whether it is mechanical, energy resources, um, chemical engineering, you know, you name it, these technologies, are, this, all these disciplines are going to be affected particularly you know, with the, the advancement of technology. But I should say that Engineering Plus is not only within engineering, 
I think it 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 captures and uh, uh, applies to many other disciplines as well, from uh, uh, let's say communications to um, cinema. We have a joint program with the School of Cinematic Arts in the area of games, virtual reality. Um, you know, I, I would go as far as um, uh, law and legal the legal profession, uh, because technology uh, is becoming penetrating this area very very fast as well. So it's uh, we live in a unprecedented, unprecedented times in, sci in science for science and engineering in human history, and I think the, our goal is to make sure that we train students to be able to uh, live in this new world and be able to be successful and also, as I say, engineer a better world for humanity. Thank you so much, Dean Yortos. I always get really excited just about this idea because it really demonstrates how engineering really cuts across so many other disciplines and how it enables all of these other areas. So that's right. I, I just wanted to add also here that you know, typically the world looks at engineers as sort of the people who are like the plumbers that they you know, I have a problem, I call my engineer to come and solve my, my plumbing problem. But <laughs> It's much, much more than that. It's it's actually taking leadership positions and, 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 and shaping the future. And with the unintended consequences that come along with the technology, it is very important that our students understand the bigger big role that they play and the big responsibility that they have, because in essence are going to be in control of technologies that will shape the world as, as, as it goes forward. So I think that's a, that's a very important um, uh, item as well. Thank you. And then just as an aside, I actually met an alum recently who actually has his background is in mechanical engineering from USC. And then he also got his law degree and then he became a patent attorney. And so I really kind of appreciated sort of how he was able to blend those two and then give him those kind of skill sets. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's uh, lots of interesting things, um, you know, intellectual property. If you think about it, is um, it will be a very interesting question about um you know, how uh, the ownership of this, how do you trace it? How do you, uh, I think that blockchain, for example, will be a very interesting technology to be used to trace intellectual property or to certify and credential, you know, intellectual property in, in many different ways as well. So a lot of these decentralized things are going to be part of the future. And these are things that we, I think, are quite interesting in many of the things that we do. Great. And then my last question for you, um, uh, Dean Yortsos, I know you do have a commitment later um, this evening, so I'm going to ask you this one last question um, to close. Um, what do you believe is unique about the graduate student experience at the Viterbi School um, relative to other top universities? Um, a number of things that I should mention. Um, USC is very welcoming and inclusive. It's a place where people feel at home. Um, you know, I also came here as a foreign student, just like many of you. Uh, at the beginning, I came as a master's student. I wasn't sure that I would stay. And then I got a PhD and <laughs> I wasn't sure that I would stay. And then, you know, several years later, I am still here. So um, Los Angeles is a very multicultural um, city uh, and it is traditionally very welcoming to foreign students, international students. And I think that's an important part of, of all the things that, 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 that we do. That's one thing to keep in mind. Um, second is that um, uh, they, uh, you will be in a university which is um, not simply a technology university. So, you know, one can, so I was, a, when I was a graduate student, actually I was at Caltech, which is essentially very much uh, uh, a technological place. Um, USC is much more than that. Um, it, it has tremendous strength in engineering and technology, but at the same time, you have all these other disciplines around you. You talk with students from many different other parts of the, or, or the uh, in other disciplines, from business to uh, cinema, to fine arts, architecture, law, policy, and so on and so forth. That allows you to have a much more uh, wider understanding of the world and also uh, have the ability to, to uh, form partnerships as well as perhaps, you know, be included in innovation and startups. Third, I wanted to mention the, um, some uh, important initiatives that the school will, will announce soon. One is in frontiers of computing and how we advance computing across the board, whether it's AI or machine learning or quantum computing or any of these areas and how these are permeating all kinds of disciplines that we have. 
as well as the uh, development of the uh, innovation ecosystem in the area of uh, what we call Silicon Beach. And this is on the western side of Los Angeles, near, near, the, near the ocean, uh, which actually is a nice, a nice place to be. And this is in partnership with uh, 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 already existing uh, strengths there at the Information Science Institute, ISI, and the Institute of Creative Technologies, ICT, which actually is a pioneer in virtual reality and many other things as well. So um, Los Angeles, as I said, has been, been, has the ability to provide uh, very fertile ecosystems for innovation and partnerships and, and uh, the ability to connect with many other people. And uh, it's also the, the uh, you know, consider a capital, creative capital of the world, whether creativity is in the arts, in, in the movies, cinema, or in engineering and the sciences. So I think that these are, you know, important parts where UAC education is, 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 uh, is, is actually very uh, unique in many ways. Um, I should not forget also the fact that we have a very good football team. Uh, now, this is not football as in soccer, uh, which uh, we, we do have a very strong women's soccer team, by the way, which I really like. But uh, the American football is, you know, it's a little different. Um, many of you do not know what it is, like, like I did not know when I first came here. But then after a while, you get to, to understand how, what it is. And so it's kind of interesting as well. And there is a lot of support for the team as well. So you create, you get a bit of a, um, of a uh, um, uh, association with the, the USC fans and the USC alumni and the USC Trojan family. And uh, so it's something to, to, to feel that you feel special uh, to be part of that. Thanks, Dean Yortsos. So um, if you don't have any other parting words, um, we'll go ahead and continue with the rest of our, our session. But I do appreciate your being here today because I know that um, we all benefit from hearing kind of your vision about the school. So. Well, thank you, Kami. And again, uh, a warm welcome to everyone who is uh, in this particular uh, webinar. Uh, I hope that uh, I will see many of you uh, in, uh, in September or August, whenever we start again, and uh, hoping that, uh, um, you know, the world will be a better place in many different ways, whether it is through, uh, you know, the elimination of, of coronavirus and also making sure that uh, uh, people uh, get um, uh, work together better in many different ways. I look forward to uh, resuming my uh, visits to China. I think I, we, we put, I think I have a visit coming up in, at the end of June. And uh, so we have a lot of friends there in many universities, Tsinghua and Peking University and Sh uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong and others as well. And uh, so we are very happy to have you here. And uh, um, I, was, I will say, we'll say in, in at USC Fire On. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean Yortsos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so if we can uh, go ahead right now, um, I would like to just turn it over to um, uh, Senior Associate Dean Kelly Goulis, who uh, oversees the admission and the student engagement office. Um, so Kelly, if you would like to take it away. Thank you, Cami. Um, I'm sure I have my, yes, I do. First of all, I'd like to welcome and congratulate all of you uh, at, to your admission to USC Viterbi. I know it's been quite a journey for you to get here. It's a very competitive process. And I have to say that uh, this is one of our most selective uh, admission cycles that I've seen in the history of my work here at USC. So I do want to congratulate you. And I know that uh, you're at a point in your academic career where you're going to be making choices. And hopefully today we'll be able to uh, answer all the questions that you have. Um, just to tell you a little bit about my office, uh, the Viterbi Stu uh, Admissions and Student Engagement Office. Uh, in my role as your, your mother when you get here, because I see myself very much as the mother of our students, uh, it, it's very much to make sure that we're here to support you. In addition to the team that you see here on the call, on the webinar, you'll also, uh, which helps on the whole admissions cycle and making sure that uh, you can uh, understand what programs we have available. There's another team that you will meet when you get here, which is our academic services and programs and engagement team. It's a unique configuration that we have in the Viterbi School of Engineering in that we pay a lot of attention to what your experience is going to be like when you get here. 
from the moment that you arrive during orientation, we kind of break you up into small groups. We make sure that you you have a good understanding of the resources and you're you're able to basically meet with academic advisors and so on. But aside from that, which you'll find very unique in a lot of US institutions and especially here in USC Viterbi, is that we spend a lot of time on making sure that in addition to the strong academics that you're gonna be experiencing here, we have some of the best faculty in the world, you have some amazing co-curricular opportunities, uh, what we call student engagement. And so a couple of years ago, we developed an app, which we call uh, Experience Viterbi or Engage SC, where we put together all of the different out of the classroom opportunities that are available to you. So we have over 60 clubs and organizations just here within the School of Engineering. And there are uh, more than 500 clubs and organizations across the university. We have things like women in engineering, we have a Viterbi Graduate Student Association, and they do a lot of things in terms of helping you build community around the things that are the, of most interest to you, as well as for your professional development. Uh, we have a lot of things in the area of service learning and innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, we know that uh, engineering is rigorous and stressful sometimes, so we have a whole focus on student wellness to make sure that you're thriving and you're, you're successful. And of course, one of the ma major reasons why I think many of you want to come to the United States to, uh, to study uh, is to uh, pursue the various career opportunities that are available here in the US. And so we have our own career services office in addition to the career services office that the university offers, but we have a team of professionals whose job is really to help our students prepare uh, themselves for uh, job opportunities. Um, and so uh, some of you, I'm sure you have looked very closely that um, you know while you're here at USC, you can uh, get some curricular practical training. Um, and then post-graduation, you can work up to three years in optional practical training. And so our job is to really uh, prepare you, make sure that your resumes look, look strong, that we um, give you some mock interviews, give you a toolkit to help you with your job search and then also to connect you with companies. So we find that that's a very important uh, decision that the uh, aspect of, of the decision-making process. And so I uh, wanna make sure that you know that that's a priority for us as well. And of course, many of you uh, may never have traveled outside of China. So transitioning to a major city in the United States uh, might be a little bit overwhelming to you. So we spent a lot of time talking about how to navigate a city like, like Los Angeles, safety and things like that, just to make sure that, that you're comfortable and, and you know what's different about the countries that you're coming from, uh, as opposed to what it's like here in, in the United States. So what I'm hoping for today's webinar uh, is that you take the opportunity to ask any questions that you have. Uh, you know, you've been admitted, so you know that we want you here. We wanna make sure that you don't leave this webinar without any questions answered. And really we wanna make sure that this is the place that you see is the best fit for you in terms of the next step in your academic journey. And so we wanna make sure that the decision is one that, that uh, it makes sense for you. So I, I really do welcome all of you and, and I'm looking forward to answering any questions that you might have uh, regarding USC. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, so um, I'll touch on a few of those things that Kelly discussed. And um, I know that many of you may have some additional questions. So do be thinking about those questions that you may have um, for Dean Goulis. Um, and we'll do that um, Q&A um, uh, at the conclusion of these short few slides that I have. So if you can just bear with me really quickly. Um, let me do this. OK. Uh, here's a, just a nice quick shot of our campus. Um, and then you heard from uh, Dean Yortzos and Goulis. Um, So just a few things to start thinking about, just um, as, as um, Dean Goulis mentioned, just as you start kind of thinking about where is the best fit for you, what university that you might um, find the best fit for your graduate studies, you know, think really um, long-term about your career and your academic goals. Um, Dean Yortzos kind of talked about the location in Los Angeles here and how we're kind of a living laboratory and it really does support a lot of the um, students' academics and their, their future professions. Um, really look at the strength of the alumni networks, um, research opportunities, if that's what you're ultimately interested in, and of course, all of your career opportunities um, that uh, really looking at those locations where you're going to be and seeing those industries um, that are, are big in, in those areas. 
Okay, so um, just a uh, few quick things um, that I'll touch on just about USC. Um, one of the nice things here are just a few notes of distinction. Um, the Wall Street Journal and the Times Higher Education ranked uh, the university 19th among more than a thousand public and private universities. Uh, we have a strong uh, emphasis on cross-disciplinary education, as you heard Dean Yorzo speak about um, engineering, kind of really collaborating and supporting a lot of other disciplines. Um, so we have a lot of collaborations with the different disciplines here at USC, such as business and public policy and cinema communications. So um, that's really one of the things that I find really valuable about being a student here at USC. Uh, one uh, note, you may know this, um, students from East Asia comprise about 59% of the university's international student population. Um, so we have students from over 110 countries um, that attend USC, um, but um, it's really interesting to kind of see that students from East Asia really comprise um, a good uh, amount of those. Um, President Carol Foltz also recently announced new university initiatives in computing and health sciences and a new center for generative um, uh, AI, as um, Dean Nordsos had mentioned. So there's a lot of growth and a lot of opportunity here. Um, and there's uh, so much um, innovation going on. Um, so this is a really kind of an exciting time to be here at USC. This is just a quick snapshot of just some uh, some numbers um, from uh, specifically for the Viterbi School. We've got about 96,000 alumni worldwide, 213 million in annual research expenditures, which is really important because all of that really supports your academics here. Um, we're currently ranked number 15 by U.S. News and World Report, 180, 189 tenure track faculty members. Um, many of you may not know um, the engineering school is one of the oldest um, schools on the USC campus. So while USC was founded in 1880, uh, the School of Engineering was founded in 1905. Um, our graduate student population, we're very proud of the fact that we have, um, you know, over 30% of our students um, identified as female and about 67% are, are males. Um, applicants from over 113 countries. And as uh, Dean Gould has mentioned, you know, this um, year's class was um, extremely selective and, and very competitive to gain admission. So I know many of you, um, hopefully, you're all very proud of that accomplishment. Uh, our master's student population, we do offer a really robust online program. So when you look at kind of the, the composition of our master's students, 86% of uh, our students, our master's students are physically on the campus, and about 14% of them are pursuing um, the program online. And many of them are working professionals, people that are working full time, and then earning their, their degree part time. Okay, so um, this um, is just kind of a quick snapshot to just something that um, Dean Yortzos had, had mentioned. Um, there's a lot of emphasis on computing and artificial intelligence here and really kind of infusing that into a lot of our curriculum. Okay, and then I don't think I have to speak too much about Los Angeles, um, but um, Dean Yortzos had kind of mentioned that already, but um, the quick thing that he mentioned about Silicon Beach, here's kind of a quick kind of fun map to see where a lot of the development and a lot of the tech companies are, um, and a lot of other organizations that have um, a presence here, um, and a, a lot of uh, these organizations do um, hire our students, uh, so it's a really, um, Los Angeles, if I were to kind of speak about it, you really don't really run out of things to ever do or pursue here. And there's just a lot of innovation and um, opportunity, both for academic and professional, but also for cultural um, and, you know, and just kind of enjoying your, your life here. So, okay. So a little bit about career connections, because I, um, Dean Goulas also kind of touched on this. Um, of course, ultimately you want to kind of um, be able to look further after you've um, earned your master's degree. And the, um, the nice thing about our career connections office is that um, they offer so many different programs that um, not only kind of help you identify where the employment is, but really um, help to prepare you to be a competitive candidate for those um, jobs or those internships that you're looking for. So you can just kind to see here, we just tried to summarize some of the, um, the great things that they do. So of course, they hold um, two um, career expos every year. And that's when a lot of the employers come and then um, speak to prospective um, applicants. They have um, advising and workshops. Um, so you can kind of talk to um, a staff member about how to make your resume um, really as competitive as possible, um, getting some interview tips and they'll do mock interviews um, with you as well, but really do um, take advantage of all of these things that um, the School of Engineering um, Career Office has to offer. And these are just some examples because this is kind of how I like to illustrate um, the, the breadth of all the things that um, Career Connections offers. So for example, it's not just holding the 
career fairs, and that's not the only thing that they do. But if you look here, this is actually from their um, the Viterbi um, Career Office Instagram. So um, you see here a lot of other companies holding information sessions to, to meet um, students that want to um, uh, possibly find employment there. So Visa and SpaceX. You'll see here in the lower left corner, um, they'll they'll hold mock interviews. And that's really important too, so that you can really refine your interviewing skills. Because obviously it's very different depending on what, where you're coming from and then going to a different um, uh, region. Um, it, it's really important to kind of get some of those tips um, from, um, from our experts. So you'll see some of these other things too, like the career and internship boot camp, and then just really kind of getting more skills um, and addressing really specific questions. The Viterbi Trek thing is something I think is really awesome that they do as well. So they'll take students kind of on a field trip to different companies to kind of learn more about those organizations. So that's just a little bit um, about the career office and what they do. Um, and many of you will always, of course, ask, where are your students working after they earn their master's degree? So we definitely have that information um, on our website, and we can um, point you, um, give you the specific um, links to go and find that information specific to your program. Okay. Um, and this is just kind of an example of what you'll find there. So you'll kind of see, um, you know, just kind of the hiring. You'll see some of the um, top companies where um, uh, they, they are, uh, our alumni are going to work after they graduate. Um, and that's specific to, to each um, academic department. Um, so you'll be able to find that um, on the website as well. Okay, so um, I kind of talked a little bit about um, our community, and so did Dean Goulas talk about um, uh, our engineering community here. Um, so there's a mentorship program, and these are some of the many things that um, uh, Dean Goulas oversees. So I handle kind of the admission side, um, and Ray and Juhui, who are also on this session, we kind of help you in the application process and kind of making the decision about coming here. Um, but then um, we also have a whole other team that helps you um, once you've enrolled here. So there's a mentorship program that is a great way for you to kind of um, be paired up with um, a student that's already um, been here for a little while to kind of help you build uh, your networks. And there's so many other things that I kind of won't go into all of the details, but um, Dean Gould has talked about our Engage SC app. And there are so many cultural activities, so many things that like um, hackathons and all kinds of activities that you can get involved in to really make the best of your one and a half to two years here. Okay, so I'll kind of go through these. I, I really do like seeing all these photos of all these activities that we do. Um, so yeah, so this is just kind of a quick snapshot. There's Dean um, Yortzos, I think at probably homecoming. Um, and so you can kind of see there's wellness events, as Dean Goulas mentioned. It's really important for us um, to, to make sure that students understand the resources that we offer for safety and wellness, um, because, you know, especially as somebody coming from a different country or from a different part um, of the United States, it, it is a big adjustment sometimes for people and you really want to do well in your classes and then you're in a different environment. So we do want to make sure that um, we have enough support for you here in order to accomplish those goals that you have. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, so a couple of last things, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A. Um, there's a deadline um, to submit your statement of intent. So I do hope um, that we've helped you kind of decide on whether USC is a good fit for you. Um, but once you've decided what to do, um, your deadline for commitment is either going to be April 15th or May 1st. So we have kind of um, a, a couple of different deadlines for students. But um, if anybody does need um, a, an extension of some kind, we, we will be able to do that um, within, you know, a couple of weeks. Um, so if you do need to request one, um, if you're trying to put together your financial documents or anything like that, um, definitely contact our office. Um, and you can kind of scan this code. We'll provide these slides for you after. Um, but there is a system um, that the university has recently launched um, to be able to submit your financial documents. Um, so you'll get um, more information about that. Actually, our office is sending more information about that by email. So look out for that as well. Okay, so the sooner you submit that statement of intent, I know many of you are probably trying to decide and, and um, you know, think about all of these different factors. But um, once you decide, um, if you do want to enroll here at USC, um, do go ahead and do that. And then um, the sooner you do that, the, um, uh, the department's to which you've been admitted. So for example, it's, if it's electrical engineering, they'll begin contacting you to, to talk about course selection, and then we can let you know when orientation is and all of those kinds of important details. Okay, so um, let me kind of do this. Um, uh, just a couple of last things. So safety, I know that's that was a, a common question that came up um, when uh, 
attendees registered for the session um, that you wanted to us to address. And so we do have um, a lot of safety um, uh, mechanisms in place to make sure that students um, not only understand the responsibility they have to, to be safe on campus, but all of the different resources that we have. So for example, we have a Department of Public Safety that patrols um, 24 hours a day. They are always accessible in case you ever um, need them. Um, we have a safety app. Um, USC is kind of a, a lift partner for, for ride sharing. Um, so that's kind of a great option. And here's a quick map also to kind of show um, how wide the safety, the patrol zone is where the um, USC public safety officers are always kind of monitoring um, those areas. Okay, and then housing is always something um, that, uh, you know, rightfully so that you're definitely thinking about before you come here. Um, and so you can kind of see here, um, we've got some um, QR codes here, you can scan and kind of take a look at um, uh, the housing options. There are um, some um, on campus housing um, options. Um, we work with USC housing um, to offer some fully furnished housing um, apartments. And then um, most of our students, though, they do live off campus and those um, uh, uh, Apartments can be just directly um, across the street from the campus, but some students also choose to kind of live a little um, further out. So there's a lot of different options. Um, I do encourage you also if you have friends um, that come here or um, we have a student ambassador program, definitely you can kind of um, pose those questions to them about, you know, suggestions for where to live and things like that. Okay, and then just as I mentioned that there's a couple um, of student ambassador profiles here that um, uh, that we just wanted to show um, just these quick screenshots. Um, but we have about 25 student ambassadors that are happy to speak with you about any questions about living in Los Angeles, what the civil engineering curriculum is like, any of those questions that you might want to ask. And especially as I, I asked, um, as I just talked about earlier, just um, you know things about housing and things about safety and you know how easy it is to make friends here. So um, yeah, you can ask them. Pretty much anything and that's what they're there for uh, so so definitely don't hesitate to ask them any questions that you may have okay so I do have um, our contact information here um, Ray and Juhui are located in our Shanghai office um, and they represent the School of Engineering so I do welcome you to ask them any questions that you may have I think Juhui also holds um, some uh, drop-in sessions on WeChat so um, I know that she'll she's kind of shared that here uh, but right now, maybe um, I'll go ahead and I'll wrap up this portion, um, and then we can go ahead to any questions that you may have. Um, so, Kelly, would you like me to answer some of these um, pre-submitted questions first, or would you like to answer some of these in the Q and A, um, the the Q and A window? Oh, I think you're muted. Maybe we can go through the ones that are in the chat right now, uh, and then we can go to the pre-submitted questions. Um, so I don't know how you ended. The first one is uh, if they can inquire. Somebody's asking, may I inquire what do we need to do after accepting our offer, transcript, certificate, certificate, certificate verification? I think you answered that, Cami, but you may want to answer that one. Sure. Yeah, so um, what you'll do is um, after um, you accept the admission offer, the graduate admission office, um, both for USC and for the engineering school, will let you know um, anything that is required. So if they need final transcripts from you, they will um, they will ask you for that. Some students, you'll need to kind of verify your degree. Um, but just so you know, a lot of students um, do the degree verification um, before they arrive here, but you do have some time to, to do that. Even um, some students do that. That after they arrive. Um, but right after you accept that offer, then you'll start receiving all of the communications from um, USC as to um, any remaining documents that you need to submit. All right. So would you like me to go through? I, I could do the next question. I think we have a question about the scientist and engineer uh, master's program. Does it take two to two years or two and a half years? And if the I-20 provides two years, um, how, 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 and the program takes the longer, how do you manage that? Um, it really depends. Some st many students finish the degree in two years and some students finish it in two and a half years. And if it looks like you are, it's taking you two and a half years, that's fine. You can work with my office and we can get your um, I-20 extended to, to, to give you uh, the two and a half years you need to finish the program. So it's not, a, it's not an issue uh, in terms of being able to get the two and a half years timeline that you would need in order to finish 
the uh, the degree, and and it's as simple as coming into uh, my office to have somebody guide you through the process, and and working with our OIS office, the Office of International Services, to kind of get you through that, uh, to to you know to go through that process. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, thank you. Um, and I can answer this next one. Um, could you expand more on a deferred offer and how does that process work? Um, so you're, if you're asking about deferring your admission, um, so there is a process to do that. You can submit a request to defer your admission and they will ask you kind of the reasons for your deferral. Sometimes it's um, because you are going to be employed. Sometimes it's for health reasons. So you'll just need to indicate the, um, the reason for that. And then the admission office goes and they will re-review your file and then they will make a decision um, to readmit you into the new uh, semester. So you can um, defer for up to one year. So if you were admitted for the fall of 2023, you can either defer to the spring of 2024 or the fall of 2024. Um, usually there is not that much of a risk because if you were admitted, um, then there shouldn't be um, too much of an issue to get readmitted. Um, but just kind of be aware that there have been very few occasions where sometimes a student, um, uh, perhaps if they did not um, perform well um, in their later um, years of their academics, that could be probably something um, as a factor. But as long as everything kind of, um, you know, your academics remain solid and everything, um, then there shouldn't uh, be too much of an issue. Okay. Uh, okay, Kelly, did you want to answer this one? Is there any opportunity or welcome to talk with faculty so that I can understand more deeply whether faculty's interests match with mine? So during the, uh, I mean, you'll, we have some, do we have some webinars and things like that during conversion, right, where some of the chairs have, have are talking to the students, but um, during this stage in the process, um, we don't have a lot of opportunity to speak directly with faculty right now, but when you're on campus, uh, definitely you can, all of your faculty will have um, office hours, uh, you're going to have an orientation with the department chair and concluded and so on. So there will be plenty of opportunity when you're here to interact with faculty. Uh, all of our classes are taught by faculty. Other universities uh, might have teaching assistants and, and others that teach the courses, but they're gonna be taught by, by regular faculty. Um, I can answer this one. Um, how long does it take if I need to transfer my I-20 from my current school? Um, so that one, um, I, I will need to ask you to contact us separately because every student's um, I-20 transfer will probably look a little bit differently in terms of the timing. So if you want to go ahead and, and contact me um, separately, then I'll just make sure I kind of look at your um, specific record um, to kind of let you know how long that might take. Um, okay. And I could answer the last one that's in the chat before we get to the other questions. Uh, um, if you're admitted into a master's program in CS, AI, or something else, and uh, are interested in, in pursuing a PhD, um, should I change from CS, MS, CS, general, uh, and take a thesis option? So let's talk about, and I know there's probably, there are other students who are thinking about or, uh, 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 pursuing a PhD. Um, the thesis is optional. Very few students take the thesis. But if you are thinking about doing a PhD, that is a, that is probably an appropriate option for you. Um, we do have students that enter the master's program and get get admitted into the PhD program. The PhD admissions process is very much faculty driven. So uh, first and foremost, when you first arrive at USC, uh, when you meet with your academic advisor, you want to make sure that you know you're on track, and you're taking the, the appropriate classes. And the, 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 the first thing that you would do when you're here is make sure academically uh, your grades are excellent because it's a very competitive process. Uh, the second thing that's really important in the PhD process, uh, admissions process is research. So if you haven't had experience in doing any kind of research in your undergraduate um, academic pursuits, while you're here, you wanna make sure that you are pursuing research. And a thesis is an excellent way to do that. Um, some programs will allow you to do directed research, so you could talk to your advisor to see if directed research is an option. In some programs, faculty uh, do, do bring in master's students uh, paid to do research, so definitely understand your program and what the opportunities are, um, and because the PhD is very much a faculty-driven process, you want to take the time to really understand uh, where the research is happening in the area that you're most interested 
and which faculty members are very much engaged in the research. And if you look back at the data that Cami presented earlier that says that USC has about $213 million in annually funded research, we are a tier one research university. And for the almost 190 faculty, tenure, tenure track faculty members that we have here, um, on average, a faculty member carry, uh, has about a million dollars in research expenditure per year. So there's a lot of research happening. It's not just the individual faculty that are doing the research, but also the research centers. And so, you know, you're, you, you, you have to kind of really get to know uh, which faculty or which research centers are doing the research in the area that you're interested in and prepare yourself to be a competitive candidate through your academics and also demonstrating your research aptitude either through a thesis um, or some other research experience. Thank you, Kelly. Um, there is a, there are a couple more questions here. So uh, are there any differences like in priority between different programs while selecting courses? Um, I'm not sure if we might need a little bit of clarification on that one or. So it depends on the department. Let me, let me just be, uh, and so in some departments you have a lot of flexibility in the coursework that you can select. It, uh, for example, they might have three core courses that you have to take for the degree, and then you have a series of electives that you can choose. And so take the time. Uh, now is the time for you to sit down and look at the, the program requirements for your degree. Uh, most of the master's programs give you some level of flexibility. In departments like computer science, where uh, we have the largest enrollment, uh, sometimes we are working very hard. And I think we have gotten down to a, to a system where uh, students will eventually get all of the courses that they want. For example, if you want AI or what have you, you might get, not get them in the semester that you want them, but we have a kind of a tiered process in which we prioritize students that haven't had the courses they really want for some of these really hot topics. Um, and so uh, the priority sometimes depends on the academic department. It could be where you are. Uh, some programs require certain prerequisites before you take other courses because there are some academic preparation that's needed. Uh, and so a lot of that will be explained to you when you are uh, taught meeting with your advisor. They'll create a course plan for you and they'll work with you to make sure that you can map out the courses that you need. And, and for the most part, um, you know, you, the, the, one, the one department in which the, you might have to uh, not get the course in the semester that you want because it's a hot topic and it might come in a, a later semester would be CS but students will get the courses that they want. Great. Um, there is a, another, oh, there's a question here. Um, and then I can kind of speak a little bit, but then perhaps Kelly, if you might want yeah. to shed some light. Um, will there be a risk of visa refusal for Chinese students studying STEM majors like quantum information? So specific to quantum information sciences, the program that we have here, there are students that have um, uh, come, uh, to enroll in that program that are from China. And so we were able to, um, yeah, um, be able to enroll them there specifically. But Kelly, if you kind of wanted to talk more about just. Um, yeah, I mean, we definitely, I mean, obviously there are, uh, there are some, some, some areas in which uh, the US government uh, is, is, is scrutinizes a little bit more. And, and for the most part, they tend to be uh, in, in kind of more the, uh, the, some of the energy areas um, than in others, but um for the most part, we're not seeing many students that have challenges getting their visas approved. Uh, and specifically for quantum, I'm not aware that this has been an area that uh, has, has, has been challenging for students to get here. I don't know, Ray, you're a little bit closer to the East Asia uh, community and maybe you have a better sense of where uh, students might have seen some, some obstacles along the way. Yeah, I, uh, we've heard some students from certain schools, they do have, they seems to have a higher risk of visa refusal. But in general, I don't see, I mean, many of our, our current uh, quantum information program students are from China. So from that perspective, I don't see that as a major issue. Thank you both. Uh, okay, we can go to the next few questions. Uh, okay, um, this one we probably need you to clarify or contact us separately, but um, when would the programs, uh, when would be the program start date on my 20, if I am traveling back to my own country this summer, do you recommend I transfer after um, or before? 
um, and you need to have a travel signature. So maybe we can kind of get somebody to advise you on that specific to your situation. But if you're starting um, in the fall, um, the the start date of the semester is um, end of end of August. So it would be at that time. Okay. Um, uh, has it been confirmed when the USC dorms will open and how do USC grad students choose a meal plan? So most of our grad students actually do not live in USC housing, if I have to be honest with you. So oftentimes students will begin there once they, they decide that they're going to enroll in US, at USC. They, you, can, you can reach out to the ambassadors in the community and get a sense of what kind of housing that you want. If you're not in USC housing, you do not need a meal plan. The meal plan uh, is really tied to primarily undergraduate students, if I have to be honest with you, making sure that they're feeding themselves 18-year-olds. Uh, so, um, and, and as they move along in their academic program, the meal plan uh, becomes looser and looser. So, um, so uh, what I would suggest is look at the resources that Cami has uh, uh, put on, on the slide and on the website and decide if you want to apply for USC housing. Uh, you can apply, I believe, as early as uh, April, uh, early April, when you're, the admission decisions are in, um, and and it's it's kind of a first come first serve. If you're going to look at the university housing itself, and you will not find out uh, what 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 you would be provided until um, until uh, early summertime, uh, but also look at some of the other options available as well. Great, thank you. And um, there's a question here about um, the scientists and engineers program. If it takes me two and a half years to complete the program, can I use CPT for the second summer internship? And is the answer different if I take two years to do the program? I believe, honestly, I'm not Ray, if you know the answer to that one. I think you are eligible for one CPT, but I am not sure about that one, to be honest. Yeah, I think we'd have to look that one up. We'd have to look that one up. Uh, that's a very good question. Yeah, so Ganlin, maybe we can get back to you on that question, um, and then we'll just make a note of that. But you can feel free to contact um, any one of us um, just to kind of send us a little reminder, and we'll look into that question. So we'd have to ask OIS what 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 is the answer yeah. to that. Uh, the career fair is held by the school. Um, well, we we are almost back to pre-COVID numbers, which I'm really excited to say. Uh, we actually don't have, it's now a career expo because it's much more than a career fair. We have uh, obviously, companies that come to campus. Uh, this fall, I think we had well over 100 companies, and in the spring, we had close to, I think, 40 companies that were on campus. We do it twice a year just for Viterbi. And then the university has a much broader career fair that our students, our Viterbi students, can participate in as well as, um, as, as uh, you know, at the entire university. But the Viterbi Career Expo is specifically just for you. Um, and so the numbers are quite robust um, and we have a lot of breakout sessions. Um, and then there are many other points in which you also connect with students throughout the year. So the moment that you arrive at the USC campus during orientation, we get you ready for your career uh, trajectory. We start to uh, provide for you a number of different work, free workshops. Everything is, is free just to make sure that you understand kind of the, the US job market, how the how the process works, writing a resume, uh, preparing kind of the yourself in terms of, of of the job search and so on and so forth. So the career expo has been very successful. Like I said, we had well over a hundred companies in the fall, and uh, and I think about forty companies in the spring, and that number is growing. But there are many other touch points in which you have an opportunity to engage with corporations for job hunting. And then I do want to add to that, uh, and I just want to emphasize how much um, you know the career expos are are really successful and they're really well attended by both students and employers. Um, but then I think Career Connections does a great job at bringing in um, companies to do just individual information sessions just about their own company. So um, I do think that it's um, a good thing to remember that the career expos are are wonderful, but there are so many other things that Career Connections offers where you can really meet um, employers one on one in kind of a smaller setting as well. Okay, um, and students in MS and data science program take elective courses in finance. Um, so that I think that you know you would need to kind of work with your advisor to um, to take those courses. And the finance um, courses are um, housed in a different part of USC. So um, every part of the school has different um, policies about approving you to take those courses from their school. Um, so definitely that's something if you want to talk to, with your advisor about, um, you should definitely do that and they'll be able to kind of advise you that way. 
Okay, so um, there is a question about um, campus safety. Um, to ensure campus safety, is there a clarified campus boundary within which firearms are forbidden to be carried? Um, if I bring a legally possessed firearm from other states, do I need to report it to USC police? If I enroll um, in OPT with my current undergraduate I-20 during the summer, oh, when is the deadline to transfer my I-20? So there's two different questions uh, here. So, you know, USC has kind of a closed campus. So I do not believe you are allowed to have firearms on the campus itself. There is a community outside of the campus, which is shared with the local um with the local neighborhood and and uh, obviously that the, the, you know USC can't can't uh, impose that. But I do definitely think if that's important to you and you have a firearm, uh, you should definitely contact. We can put you in touch with USC Public Safety. And uh, we don't. I, this is the first time I've had that question, so I really don't know what the protocol is. Uh, but Public Safety and they can talk to you about if you need to register it here, if if and so on and so forth, um, and if and 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 what 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 the process is. Um, but I'm relatively certain that you're not allowed to have a firearm on the USC campus itself. Yeah, I think so too. And then um, related to your uh, your question too um, about enrolling with OPT and then when's the deadline to transfer. So that's one. Um, maybe Jupe, if you can kind of um, get in touch with this um, uh, um, student, um, then we can kind of figure out when is the deadline because um, th some of those things will vary depending on on, on your situation. So um, we'll find out specifically um, for your case. Okay. Um, there's another question here. Um, what can I do if I'm still waiting for offers of other programs at the deadline um, for the financial document? Um, so definitely um, keep in touch with us and let us know. We do have a little bit of flexibility to extend your deadlines. The reason why we put a financial document deadline is um, if you submit those documents too late, it is very difficult for us to get things processed in time for you to be able to go and get your visa and get your I-20 and all of those things. So if you need a little bit of extra days, um, we're happy to try to um, extend the deadline for you. So, so that shouldn't be a problem, but definitely try to contact us in advance if you think that you might need a little bit. Bit of extra time. Okay. Okay. Um, so Kelly, I think we actually, um, I know there are some pre-submitted questions, but I do think that we actually addressed most of them um, okay. during the course of these other um, questions. Um, so if um, perhaps we might just give everyone um, just a couple of more minutes if for any last questions, then you're welcome to submit them. Um, and then we'll just kind of uh, uh, take a look here and see if there's any additional. And then maybe while we're waiting for just um, last couple of questions, um, Kelly, maybe if you just want to kind of share with students, um, just having um, overseen this office and all of these this wonderful student population for a number of years, what would you say, you know, are the most, if you were to give anyone any tips on succeeding here, um, what would you say that those would be? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. I do have to say that, you know, you're in a master's program, you're pursuing a master's program, some of you will do a PhD, so you'll have more, more time, but uh, the time goes by quite very quickly. And uh, we try to provide you a lot of different opportunities, and you're all different, you're all, you're all interested in different things. The campus has on what, 20 professional schools, a lot of different, uh, LA is an exciting city, and so on and so forth. So my, my advice to you is that first week when you're here for orientation one, take the time to kind of really understand what USC has to offer, listen, uh, join a few clubs and organizations because, and so on and so forth. I think that, uh, you know, engineering is a rigorous discipline. You're all very brilliant. You're here, um, but it's a new, it's an, it's, it's a new environment. And so really get to know what resources are available and have a good time because you are in LA, you're, you're, you know, enjoy the academic pursuits as well as the other things that the university has to offer. Um, I hear often from students, you know, they've been here a year, uh, almost a year close to graduation, and they say, oh, I wish I would have known X, Y, and Z. And so I think Cami and Ray, I have done a great job in, in creating these, uh, you know, mentorship programs and ambassadors. And it's really intended for that, for you to talk to people that are older and have been through the process before and really understand uh, what's available to you uh, here at USC. You're going to carve out your own experience. Um, and so it really is a matter of really seeing how to make those touch points and connections um, when you're here. The other thing I do want to mention is that 
uh, our faculty really want to meet you. And so oftentimes I'll talk to professors and they'll say, nobody comes to my office hours. And so I don't, you know, and I know culturally it might be a little bit different in different countries. It's, it's very different. But here, the faculty want to know who you are. And so reach out to them, visit them in their office hours. If you need help, uh, ask for help because it's, it's common. Uh, oftentimes students might be struggling uh, we see students sometimes if they if they do struggle, they're struggling that first semester making that transition. That's what we're all here for. So I don't want students to feel like they're anonymous. I want them to know that there's an entire community of staff and faculty, uh, especially in the Viterbi School of Engineering, uh, that are specifically here to support the success of our students. And uh, if we don't know what you need, then we can't you know connect you with the right support and the right resources. Thanks, Kelly. I think those are really great words of wisdom. Um, so as we kind of wrap up, there's just a couple of last questions, and then we'll answer those. And then I just welcome all of you to feel free to contact any one of us if you have questions um, after the close of this session, which I hope and I'm, I'm sure many of you will. Um, but there's a couple of questions. Um, parking on campus. So slowly, um, a lot of parking spaces are getting taken away um, because um, we are building so many more research facilities and classrooms and really nice spaces for our students for their academics. Um, but there are um, kind of some off campus housing, um, not housing, parking um, uh, 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 structures for students to park at. So definitely there is um, uh, some parking um, areas for students. I and do have then, to say it's gotten a little bit better with COVID because we have more and more folks that are that are working off campus. So uh, I do know I had two children that went to school here. And if you plan ahead of time, you can you can get good, good parking. Um, so that's that. But, but you do have to do some planning. Definitely. And I think that the, because they've increased the um, transportation system here, a lot of students do use the metro. I have kind of seen a lot of more students that drops off kind of right in front of um, the engineering side of campus. So there's that. And then um, uh, Seyoung is asking about um, orientation um, date for the master's students. So the um, fall semester begins on Monday, August the 21st. And usually, Kelly Wright, we have the orientation about two weeks prior to that. Um, yeah, and as soon as yes, and as soon as you decide that you're going to come to USC, then there's like a process that we have. We start to connect you with a lot of um, next step and resources and save the dates and things like that. And usually, orientation is uh, in the beginning of August. So you definitely want to try to arrive here a few days prior so you can get settled into your housing and so on and so forth. Um, so you'll have plenty of time to prepare for that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to just ask um, Ray um, and Chihuahua if you have any other last uh, uh, parting words before we wrap up. Uh, no, uh, we will be having some in-person events, offline events. So for you to see uh, each other and us. Uh, so just two weeks ago, we had one small event in Singapore, and we're going to have a number of them in China and then Seoul in South Korea. So we do look forward to seeing you in person. Um, hope you hope you like this session and get your answers, get your questions answered. Thanks, Ray. Okay, well, on behalf of everyone here, um, I know I speak for, for all of us. Um, congratulations on being admitted to the Viterbi School. Um, we do hope we are able to see you here. And like Ray said, please do, um, you know, get um, all the resources you can to make your decision. Um, we've got some great ambassadors that can help you answer your questions as well. Um, but we're here to kind of help you make that decision. So I hope you have a, a great day. Um, and please reach out to us if you have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations.